Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it's going to be an updated World Chalice combo tutorial for post-Extreme Force, utilizing Sir Yuja Skulldread, and this is actually a combo tutorial that's been pretty highly requested from me, and that is utilizing Venus plus Exodius combos to make the most valued use out of Sir Yuja that I can possibly think of doing. Uh, a lot of people are cutting Exodius, uh, this is due to the first place Bokum list not playing it, even though he does recommend it as a card you could play in one of his player interviews, as well as people sort of arguing the merits of not playing playing it because it can contribute to bricks because it's not strictly a starter card, all that sort of stuff. But I personally still run the card and I use it because I want to use it as an extender and a recovery option. I believe it is a superior recovery option and an, a superior extender to almost anything we have currently in the format to mess with. Uh, so it's a card that I'm still very much a fan of because it just allows the deck to play a little bit safer, in my opinion. Uh, but basically, I'm playing this card and when people ask me for combos with it, I'm like, you can just draw six to seven cards before you even like commit into any of your World Chalice plays. And people are like, what do you mean by that? I was like, you draw two cards off of Ningirsu or three cards off Ningirsu, depending on if your hand has another World Chalice name in it or not. And then you resolve Sir Yuja Skulldread when you have nine cards in hand at the point when you're putting three cards back. So you get to pick the best six cards out of your hand. And that is the most effective way to use Sir Yuja. Drawing cards first, making your hand bigger, and then using Sir Yuja is huge. It's fantastic. Like, it lets you literally sculpt your hand into everything you want. Your deck is smaller, so you're drawing into more impactful cards. All that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you two combos. First one is just Venus plus Exodius, and the other one will be Venus Exodius plus a World Chalice Monster, because it does actually yield you a additional plus in an unorthodox way that you may not uh, be easily, you know, uh, finding in your own combo sequences. But it lets you draw three off Ningirsu and then resolve Saryuja. Uh, but all these combos, you're keeping at least Ningirsu and Saryuja on field, so like you're not investing your Ningirsu into the Saryuja either. So like that's good. But anyway, first combo, you're going to summon Venus, and you're going to activate its effect three times. To special summon three shine balls from the deck and then you're going to link away your first shine ball into link spider and then you're going to link away the other two shine balls underneath it uh, into either proxy dragon or binary sorceress depending on what you're playing uh, it just has to be something that points sideways and it has to be something that puts the two shine balls in grave now in the previous versions of the venus exodius combo we would like make imduk here and then make eve with link spider in the last shine ball and then force an aura out uh, that was to get like max value and draw three off in Gearsu. But now we don't need to be doing that uh, because like the fact that Saryuja will just give us the third card anyway. And then also it'll give it to us in a more optimal setting because we'll be able to draw four and then put the three worst cards back regardless of whether or not they were cards we drew. Like drawing a random third card off Ningirsu is much worse than drawing four and then putting the three worst cards in your entire hand back into the deck. But I digress. From here, you're going to special summon your Exodius, putting your three Shine Balls back into your deck. And then you're going to use Venus's effect to pay 500 summon another one out. And from here, you're going to make your Eeb. Next to the Proxy Dragon. Uh, now, it should be noted that this first combo does not dodge Ash Blossom uh, with your Ningirsu, because you're not special summoning any World Chalice monsters out of your hand. But that's actually good, because if you can bait an Ash Blossom on the Ningirsu draw too, that means the Skull Dread is going to go uncontested. And, you know, that's arguably better. Uh, but so you summon the Eeb, and then you're going to use Venus's effect, getting the last two Shine Balls out of your deck. And you're going to link one of them into Imduk. Now, this is for the two names, for the World Chalice names, that you want next to your stuff. And now from here, you have a couple of different things you could do. You could either make this into Imduk, and then link this and Proxy Dragon away into Ningirsu, leaving the Link Spider. Uh, I personally prefer to just leave this here as a floating resource for whatever I might draw off Ningirsu. Uh, depending on what you draw, your things can change. Uh, in terms of variables, but you're, so you're going to link with Proxy Dragon and Link Spider into the Ningirsu, because the Eeb opens up that zone for you, and then Ningirsu's effect will activate, you've got two World Chalice names here, and so then you'll draw two cards. So now you're at five cards in hand. So now from here, it should be pretty straightforward. You've got at least four monsters on the field, and you can just make Saryuja without using the Ningirsu. It's not an optimal Saryuja, because you are using Eeb as one of the materials, meaning that you're making Saryuja with technically five materials, uh, because the uh, Eeb is very much worth two monsters, uh, but you were plus enough in the combo sequence for it to not matter. Uh, but So what you're going to do is you're going to make Saryuja Skull Dread with those, and then if you have a World Chalice in your uh, hand at this point, you can mask it with either the Eeb or the Imdux uh, Grave Effect. Uh, if your opponent hasn't asked you for any reason at this point. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to flip these cards over. Uh, because basically, you're just going to draw four. 
and whatever the worst like three cards in your hand are for the situation you're just going to put back into your deck so you're resolving sir yuja's effect to put back cards when you have nine cards in hand and that's huge uh you're always going to be doing that when you have nine cards in hand uh, if you're performing any of the Venus Exodius combos, Venus Exodius by itself or Venus Exodius plus a World Chalice monster, you're always going to be doing that. So, like, at this point, you can put back Garnet, you can put back the Transmodify because it's unneeded, you can put back a Duplicate Venus, and literally just keep, like, these amazing cards in your hand, like the Brilliant Fusion, the World Legacy, World Chalice, all that sort of stuff. So, that's the first combo. It's very simple and straightforward. The next combo is the one that's a little bit unorthodox in terms of how it's, you know, done. Because it's a little weird how you get to the third draw off in Girsu. Uh, but it, it should make perfect sense to you once you see it. So let me reset this real quick and I'll show you how that one works. Alright, so now for this combo sequence, you start with Venus Exodius as your actual combo cards. And you need just any World Chalice name in your hand. Or it could be e Telly, something like that. Uh, plus your other two cards that you're going to have naturally from your starting hand. Uh, now, it's noted, it's noteworthy that like it doesn't matter what this card is. Um, if it's Lee, you're still going to play the turnout arguably the exact same way uh because like you again are gonna do uh, a ningirsu play without resolving any of your like powerful world chalice effects like lee or world legacy world chalice until after you've resolved ningirsu which then you can extend upon the play further with those cards uh but so this play is really good because this play actually generates extra pluses you'd think that you'd end with the same number of cards you're just rotating this out for a new card drawn but you actually get to keep the eve on the field from the first combo sequence and make suryuja and keep ningirsu and Eve on the board at the same time, so it's actually a bigger plus than you might think, uh, because you don't just get a new card off this. Uh, you still end with six cards in hand, but you keep a card on the field uh, that's an Eve, which is a very good resource. But so you'll normal summon Venus, you'll use its effect three times, pay 15 to summon three Shine Balls from your deck, and then you will link away the Shine Ball into Link Spider, like we did previously, and link these away into your Proxy Dragon, like we did previously, or your binary sorceress, whatever you're playing. You'll special the Exodius, putting these three back into your deck, and then you're going to use the Venus, and you're going to special a Shine Ball again from your deck. Now, this is where we get kind of strange. This is where things change. In the previous combo, we made Eve with these two cards, but we want this Link Spider to be gone, and we've got the Proxy Dragon opening up these zones for us. So we're actually going to link with the Shine Ball and the Link Spider into our Eve. In this instance and leaving the Exodius on the field you'll see exactly why in just a moment then you're going to use Venus's effect special shine ball from your deck and you're going to link this into an M Duke but your M Duke is going to go in the extra monster zone that you just got the link spider out of nifty eh? this is how we get the other name for a world chalice name up here without committing to Orum because we don't want Orum to be used to make Saryuja because again that's starting to use extra materials for our Saryuja and if we can get away with not doing that we want to do that we want to maximize our card economy value we don't want to start you know using Eeb and Orum plus two monsters to make Saryuja because that meant we made it with actually six monsters and not four in terms of the pure resources that went into it but so you're going to use Venus its last time over here into the Shine Ball and you're going to make it into a second M Duke because the Proxy Dragon opens up the slot and then from here, you're going to link these into your Ningirsu. This combo does get to get uh, masked by Ash, uh, or masked from Ash by the Imduk. So you'll do Ningirsu chain link one and Imduk is chain link two, which will special summon the guard dragon from your hand. And then you will draw three cards instead of the two like we did previously. So you've rotated the guard dragon in this instance out for these cards. Now, like I said, if this was Lee, instead of Guard Dragon, or even if it was World Legacy World Chalice, you would probably do this exact same play. Well, maybe not World Legacy World Chalice. That might be a stretch. But if it was Lee, you would arguably do the exact same play because then at this point you could use Lee to search World Legacy World Chalice and you have an Imduk on the field. So you can just perform an additional Normal Summon for it immediately and then go into your Skull Dread that way. But so from here, you've got these five cards in your hand. Uh, just flip them over for convenience sake. Um... And then you've got these cards on the field that are all worth one monster each. The Imduk, the Guard Dragon, the Exodius, and the Venus. And they're just chilling there. So now you get to make Skull Dread with these cards. And so that's where the value comes out in this specific instance. So you get to make Skull Dread. You get to use its effect. If you have another World Chalice name in your hand, you also get to mask the Skull Dread um, from Ash with the Imduk that went to Grave. So it's, it's really cool. So yeah, at this point, you again draw four cards. And then you get to put the three worst cards back into your deck out of these nine. So you get to use 
all of your, like, very minimal resources, honestly. And, like, if it was Lee that you used, you got to search, so you have an extra card in hand. If it was Guard Dragon you used, Guard Dragon can bring back a vanilla and start comboing from there. There's a lot of different things that, like, are basically the variables you can stack upon this. For this to be a very low investment combo sequence to do that doesn't use your powerful World Chalice effects like Lee or World Legacy World Chalice, doesn't use Brilliant Fusion, uh, any of that, like, this is very good. The fact that you literally just drew seven cards, you're putting the three worst cards back, and you still have all these good cards in your deck left unused. Like, you could just dig for your Reborn, dig for Brilliant Fusion, dig for Soul Charge. Um, you get to put back, like, parts of your Eva package if you're playing that. Uh, you get to put back duplicate Venuses or Transmodifies that you no longer need because you've performed combo sequences properly. You could dig for extra copies of Exodius to be recovery options for the turn after. There's a lot of different things that this allows you to do, and this is what I believe to be the most effective use of Sir Yuja Skull Dread is. Or, maybe not the most effective, because going straight into it with Venus does have its merits, like just normal summoning Venus and going into Skull Dread. But, this is the most card economical way to do so, and it's something that strictly Exodius allows. It's something that, like, you can't really do it the most effectively if you were doing it, like, with Venus plus World Legacy World Chalice. Why? Because you'd end up with a board like Sir Yuja Skull Dread plus Ningirsu, but you'd have used all of your powerful effects for the turn. With Exodius, you get to make these kind of boards and then save these effects for later, and that's why I particularly like this sort of thing. Uh, it's a recovery option and it's an extender that keeps you from having to waste some of your powerful cards, uh, and it also just like it just lets you extend really, really well. Like Brilliant Fusion here, if you dig for Brilliant Fusion, that's amazing. Like. Brilliant Fusion sends, like, if you're playing the Eva package in particular, like, Brilliant Fusion sends Eva and sends, like, a card. Searches Lee if you haven't already used it. The Brilliant Fusion makes Seraph Knight be summoned. You can perform an additional normal summon. You can special summon out of your hand off Skull Dread. So you still have two summons you can perform from your hand for the turn. You can make Firewall with the Seraph Knight and the Ningirsu. Like, there's, there's so many different ways it can be extended upon the play. Because you use so few of your actual tangible hard once per turn resources because of what Exodius allowed you to have. But anyway, I don't want to sit here and seem like I'm preaching the use of Exodius. I just really like the card. I really find the card very optimal uh, for certain combo sequences. It turns Venus into basically a huge one card combo uh, by itself because of the recovery option that Exodius gives. And then any World Chalice name makes it, you know, really good to stack upon because, like I said... You haven't used any of your World Chalice names effects except for maybe Lee uh, in the entirety of the sequence of this combo happening. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. As per always, uh, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description if you want to connect with me, chat with me, watch me on other forms of media like Twitch or my Facebook fan page or anything like that. But as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Let me know your opinions on Exodius in the comments down below, as always. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. And so now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that's supporting in the lower tiers. You guys are forever awesome for the support that you give. You help make things on this channel possible, and I cannot express the amount of appreciation I have for you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the support.